What up, what up? What's going on, guys? Your boy, Jess. And today I just wanted to do a recap on round one of the National Football League 2014 draft. It was quite an interesting day of draft. Thing, I should say, of drafting. Um, shout out to everybody who came through the live stream, the, uh, the get-together of the draft that we had, you know, uh, we showcased the entire, you know, first round draft and everybody was in there and, uh, it was fun. You know, uh, we had, you know, every team represented in there and we was all discussing picks and, you know, who we wanted and who we thought we should have had and things like that. So, uh, this is just my take on the draft, uh, you know, uh, my opinions, my thoughts. I would love to know in the comment section. You know, uh, what team, you know, you're a fan of. Also, are you happy with your selection? You know, first off, Jadavion Clowney goes number one overall. And I selfishly wanted to see that happen so bad due to the fact that I think paired up with J.J. Watt, Jadavion Clowney is going to be a star. It's my opinion. Now, a lot of people, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, sports uh analysis this this analysis this, this, this. a lot of people were saying that you know he doesn't have heart he doesn't have the desire he doesn't have the efforts that you would like to see in a number one overall pick he has amazing athletic talent you know he's he's uh freakishly athletic you know he's he's very quick he's very fast and um they they don't they're not sure if you know uh the, the heart and will is there to match up with his talent. And I believe, this is just my opinion, but I believe if you are on J.J. Watt's defensive line, you will give nothing but 100%. I don't think him and Brian Cushing will allow him to not give nothing short of 100%. Now, uh, it, it's, it's going to be, I think, fun to watch. Dumb two, you know, going in now. They have talks of uh, yesterday. They the, the analysts were saying how uh, Clowney could possibly, you know, be used at some linebacker spots as well as you know being down lineman because you know Texas runs a three four and you know Clowney and uh, South Carolina. Well, I'm not I, I'm, I'm not big on college football. You know, I really don't watch too much college football, but I believe it was South Carolina. If I'm wrong, don't don't sling me. But uh, I know that he ran a, you know, they were running a 4-3. And so there was some kind of like, eh, we're not too sure how we fit in the scheme. But I, I just think he's going to be amazing to watch. I think that's going to be an amazing duo, you know, paired up with J.J. Watt. Now, uh, if anybody knows J.J. Watt, you know he is arguably the best defensive rusher in the game. Pure lineman. I'm not talking about, you know, a linebacker like an Alden Smith or like a Von Miller who rushes off the edge and getting sacked. Now, I'm talking about just pure on-the-line type of guy getting sacks on a D-line. Arguably one of the best, if not the best. And you need to pay attention to that man. If there's anybody on that team that merits a double team, it's J.J. Watt. Clowney will get his opportunities. He couldn't have gone to a better team. Well, you know, like I said, technically he could have. Yeah, he could have went to the Seahawks, which would have been a better team. But you guys know what I mean. For a number one overall pick, he couldn't have gone to a better defensive line. If you look at the top 10 picks, there's not a better defense than than Texas. You know, Texas were were um, projected last year when the season started to go into the playoff, make some noise, possibly even Super Bowl contention. And, yeah, we all know what how that ended. But their defense is very good. If Brian Cushing can stay healthy, J.J. Watt is uh, just a monster. Like I said, he's always... You know, game plan for, you know, a lot of double teams keeping the running back in, this tight end to try and chip JJ. So I think Clowney will get his one on one matchups. I think he will get a lot of opportunities. And uh, we'll see how he does. But I, I think that's a phenomenal pick for them. A lot of people are thinking they shouldn't have went quarterback, maybe Johnny uh, Manziel. But, you know, I, I think they went with a, with a very good pick. Number two was uh, Robinson, offensive uh, guard. And got to understand that you know I, I still believe in Bradford I don't think Bradford is done or watched up I definitely think he's a, a, a solid quarterback who needs the ability to stand upright if you can't protect the quarterback how do you expect them to get anything done you know so um they were even talking about maybe going after Sammy Watkins or possibly even going 
for a quarterback as well because they had two picks at number two and number 13. You know, a lot of people were, were even talking, you know, maybe even Johnny Manziel at 13. Uh, but what what I liked is that, you know, they, they took uh, Donald at number 13, the defensive tackle, um, and they took the offensive guard at uh, pick number two. But that, that just shows me that they still have faith in uh, Bradford. You know, they went ahead, got him, you know, the best guard in the draft, got him some protection. You know, so uh, I think that was a good pick. Number three, this is when the chat went crazy. The chat went nuts. The chat went nuts when Bortles was picked at number three overall to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, nobody was expecting it. That right there was, uh, to me, easily the biggest shock in the draft. I, I did not. I thought Manziel would possibly be the first QB taken. Uh, you know, if if it was Bortles, I didn't see it at number three. Uh, so, you know, again, I'm not too big into college football, so I don't know how good he is. You know, I just go off of, you know, the things I see, you know, like um, I, I go by what analysts say. You know, I go by, you know, highlight clips. And, of course, highlight clips are nothing but your best work. So uh, he looked amazing in his, in his highlight clips. But, you know, if there's any Will Jaguar fans or if there's anybody who religiously watches college football, you know, you guys can definitely give me some insight on how good you think these guys are going to be. Because, again, I, I don't watch any college football, really. I really don't. Um, so let me know what you guys think about that pick. Now, me as a 49ers fan, I thought we had a, a true op, uh, opportunity to get uh, Denard, who was the, a cornerback, who was projected top 10, top 15-ish, and he slid all the way down to Cincinnati, and they and Cincinnati took him, I think, at like the 24th pick or, or 23rd, whenever they had him, and I was, I would have been, oh man, I would have been so happy if we got him, you know, that was definitely, you know, uh, a player where, you know, during the draft was happening in the chat, I'm like, we need a cornerback, you know, I, I don't know who's available, but I do know the 49ers Badly need secondary help. You know, we really, really could use a cornerback. And we selected a safety who they were saying we might transition into a nickel corner. And, I mean, I picked like 30th that we had. Not really going to be too many steals at that spot. But, I mean, that's, that's who we got. The biggest thing was, where was Johnny Football going to go? Where was Manziel going to go? I really thought he was going to go to Dallas. Majority of everybody in the chat saw Dallas taking him because we all know how Jerry Jones is. You know, he's he's a guy who loves box office. You know, he uh, was already saying how if Manziel was available, it would be very difficult not to take him because you already know Johnny Manziel is going to sell tickets. He's going to sell jerseys. He's going to bring attraction to your organization, and that's what Jerry Jones loves. And um, unfortunately for uh, Dallas fans, because <laughs> there was a lot of Dallas fans that actually wanted him, uh, he did not go, which I thought he would have. Uh, they ended up picking up a, a tackle or a guard. They picked up some offensive linemen to uh, help, you know, their uh, offensive line. And I really saw him going to Dallas. Uh, once he got passed up by uh, Minnesota, because I, I thought Minnesota would be a good fit for him. They had the eighth pick. We all know they need a quarterback, but they sl- I think they took a linebacker. I don't remember exactly, but I think they took a linebacker. I thought that would have been a good spot for him, you know, because I was like, how awesome would it be for him to go to Minnesota? You know, uh, it it would take a lot of pressure off of him because you got Adrian Peterson. Obviously, the game plan is going to revolve around the best running back in the league. Possibly could be the best running back ever when his career is done. This guy's a monster, you know, so that would be an easy fit for him to come in, easy transition, come in. You know, the offensive game plan is going to revolve around AP, so it's going to be you know, less opportunities for him to really make too many mistakes because you can't make too many mistakes when you're just giving AP the ball. That's what you do when you're on that team. Just give AP the ball. That that guy's a monster. (laughs) I I thought that would be a good for him, but they didn't take him. And then Dallas passed up on him. I was like, where is he going to go? And pick after pick after pick just passed up. And um, he he did not get picked. And then, um, because a lot of people thought he would have gone – to Cleveland at number eight, right? They had number eight pick, right? Whatever, I, I believe it was number eight because Cleveland traded back with the Bills, the Bill, or maybe it was ninth. I'm not sure. 
No, 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 I think it was ninth because because Minnesota had eight, and then Bills had nine, and they traded up and get Sammy Watkins, who I love. I think that was a good pick. You know, um, again, I only learn about the players when the draft is coming around. You know, I, I'll listen, I'll pay attention to all the analysts and what they got to say. I watch, you know, um, a, a lot of uh, footage, you know, about the the top players and who were go where where. So I, I learn about the players then. And he looks amazing. He looks like he is going to be a stud. And I think that's a very good pick for Buffalo. They picked from ninth. They moved up to fourth. They snagged him. Cleveland moves back. And number nine, okay, this is possibly a fit for Manziel. But they go the cornerback route. And they don't pick Johnny Manziel. And then pick up the pick. We wonder where you're going to go. And then he ended up going to Cleveland. And at the, I think it was 23rd pick. It's their second pick. They traded up again, I believe. If I'm wrong, don't slay me. But this is just all happening from yesterday. And my memory is just that short. <laughs> but um, he goes to Cleveland. And I, I think he'll get his opportunities there. You know, they definitely got some weapons. You know, um, they, they got Josh Gordon, who emerged as, uh, you know, top five wide receiver last year. You know, they have themselves a very good defense. A lot of people sleep on how good the Browns' defense is. The Browns have a very good defense. It's their offense that was lackluster. You know, we, we all know Trent Richardson was an absolute. I consider him a bust. You know, he's unable to really uh, run the ball effectively. And he was supposed to be, you know, uh, uh, the savior and say, you know, like a huge part of the offense. And he turned out to be nothing. So, um, I, I thought... At first pick, I thought number four that they were. I thought they were going to go Sammy Watkins, and then they trade, and then they, you know, get. Him. But they end up getting Johnny Manziel. At, at I, I want to say twenty third pick. If I'm wrong, excuse me. But I think that's where he went. Somewhere in, around the twenties. And uh, I think uh, you know, good, good fit for him. I definitely think Minnesota would have been a lot better. Uh, Minnesota does take a quarterback. They end up trading to the number thirty two spot. They trade with Seattle, and to end the day, they end up going. Teddy Bridgewater, who, um, again, I only learn about the quarterbacks as, you know, uh, the NFL, you know, when everybody, when you turn to any NFL network and all they're talking about is the players and the potential. And uh, his draft day, his draft day combine was said to be one of the worst ever, you know, and they showed some highlights of him, of Teddy Bridgewater and he was throwing like four yard passes in the dirt. <laughs> you know, a lot of people were shocked about that pick. I watched first take today and Ryan Clark was like um, that they had the worst draft. No, no, no. He said Jacksonville, but um, Skip Bayless said Minnesota had the worst draft. You know, um, they were considered, you know, the next question, who was considered the loser out of the draft? And um, Skip Bayless said Minnesota. You know, he thought that the linebacker they took was a huge reach. And then to go on ahead and take Teddy Bridgewater there, you know, uh, wasn't that great of a pick. So, you know, I don't know. I would love to know your guys' in input. I'm sure there's people that know a lot about college football that I don't. So a lot of people would really know if Teddy Bridgewater is capable or the guy that we selected. I don't really know his name. I don't remember. But, you know, I would love to know if there's anybody that's really enthusiastic about college football that knows these guys that would be able to help me understand how good these players are. You know, what team are you? Who did you take? Are you happy with the pick? I would love to know. Um, this is your boy, GS Man. We're going to be signing out. Peace. Get it, baby.